One, two, three, four, all together. Four. So four warriors. By all accounts, I shouldn't recommend this film to you. It's cheap, it's got amateurish acting, and the makeup looks terrible. So why the hell did I enjoy this movie so much? Anyway, let's backtrack a little bit and tell you a little bit about Four Warriors. So this is a basically a kind of fantasy movie set in time just after the kind of the Crusades, and it focuses on uh, initially three sort of Crusader knights, basically, who are tra sort of travelling back home from the Crusades, and with them they brought this kind of Saracen prisoner to essentially carry all their stuff. And they come across this kind of seemingly initially abandoned village and it seems to be just inhabited by women happy days you might say however this the village is being terrorized by some kind of demonic forces and it's basically killed off all the men and stolen all the children and basically we're sort of told there's this legend of these sort of four warriors that kind of can defend this kind of village it's a very flimsy legend i've got to say and very open to interpretation but there you go anyway so of course it's down to our heroes to try and defend this village against these kind of evil forces what they assume first of all are just kind of some kind of bandits but are actually sort of uh, a kind of uh, not very well described demonic force they're just kind of there we don't really know too much about them or why they're actually there apart from they're trying to dig around for some crystals to make a, uh, a crown that's going to rule the world or something but we kind of just told that in passing don't worry about too much about that anyway so we have a good bit of a lineup change in regards to the, the initial four warriors which i'll come on to in a second but essentially it's kind of defending this village against these kind of attackers so let's kind of delve into a little deeper shall we so first of all like I said, this this is a cheap film, and like all the kind of B-movie films, you can't really hold it to the same standard that you would do, you know, a kind of multi-million pound or dollar cinema release. And obviously, they're going to have to sort of take shorter cuts and do things on the cheap. So, let's talk about the negatives first, I guess. So, the first thing here is it does have that kind of the, 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 the cheaper feel to it. There's uh, not a lot of cast here. Uh, the kind of the action is all sort of fairly poorly choreographed. The acting, unfortunately, for the most part anyway, is is kind of quite poor and quite sort of stilted. The effects are kind of fairly minimal. The makeup effects on the actual creatures themselves uh, are actually quite laughable. To be, it literally looks like paper mache on, on certain ones anyway. Um, so you know, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? But I have to say this has a genuine sense of fun to it and on a technical level it, it kind of is shot far better than it deserves to be so on the technical level the cinematography and the kind of the lighting stuff like that I actually think it looks pretty damn good and, and pretty professionally made I have to say so it kind of you almost sometimes you forget you're kind of watching a very sort of cheap film if that makes sense and you kind of just the way it's sort of it, the shot and, and the story kind of flows even though it has some cheesy and um, convoluted bits it just you know feels like it's a kind of a slightly higher production value than it actually is and all of a sudden basically you'll kind of go oh yeah this is kind of cheap and it looks kind of lame in certain places so this is a it's quite a simple story but i have to say the other thing, the other thing about it is that the characters are all quite kind of fun as well this is the other this is the other good thing to it you kind of really do buy into the characters though i have a couple of niggles to that so like i said it doesn't have a huge cast which is probably to its benefit to be honest because you do kind of get to know these um these kind of sort of characters so we have the kind of the grizzled leader basically who's a bit of a sort of no-nonsense type of guy and you do get the you do get the idea he probably would make quite a good sort of military captain and what have you and you've got the kind of got the, the young upstart basically who is a bit more sort of cocky a little bit maybe a little bit more carefree you've kind of got this sort of the old like an older grizzled guy basically and they're at they're, they're sort of saracen prisoner and if you can't guess obviously he's going to kind of become a good guy now the, the interesting thing here is they they actually mix up your, your four warriors here so you really think it's going to be those four but they actually replace one of the actual characters with a woman from this village now one of the issues i have here is that we, we, if there is this legend these four warriors the all of the the so they were soldiers you can kind of say these are combat ready guys even the saracen 
you know, he's a. You can kind of buy him to a certain degree joining this group, but they they swap out a, one of the kind of the the soldiers for a, this woman from the village, and she's just a farmer. I don't know how the hell this makes a warrior all of a sudden who can fight demons and stuff, but you know whatever. And I have to say, okay. Is it this is this is really now you've got a bit of a more a mixed cast. You've obviously got the, the Saracens for your ethnicity. You've got your you know your, your female demographic covered. You know for diversity and all of that. So you know you you can pick holes in things in things like that. But I have to say, even though I, I, I maybe question that choice, it does kind of flow uh, you know quite well to be honest. And you know the relationships that these guys have with the villagers. You, know, you want to see them succeed. You kind of you do root for them, and you know they they the, the main guy, I guess the, the, the grizzled captain, basically he strikes a bit of a romance. This kind of this sort of female warrior, but again, it, it kind of you kind of look through the acting and you kind of look for the cheesy B movies, and, and you do kind of buy into the characters, even though it's you know it's, it's such a cheap production. So despite all of these many flaws, I th- I think it overcomes it. I have to say so. If you like just a bit of a, an action movie uh, with a, a fantasy film, basically, without, and you, you, can, you can kind of look past the cheapness, to be honest with you, for just a bit of fun uh, and a bit of sort of swashbuckling and durang Not great fight scenes, I have to say, to be quite honest. <laughs> but there you go. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. It reminds me of the, the, the sort of the kind of Italian uh, sort of fantasy films that you sort of got out after kind of you know the Conan sort of came out. You had all the sort of the American uh, you know jump, jump film jumping on the bandwagon kind of like Beast Marshal and stuff like that. But you also had these ones from Italy and places like that. And it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, so if you are a real kind of uh, B movie pundit, you're going to kind of remember know what I'm talking about, and you may you may like it because it definitely has that feel to it. But there's just very kind of vibrant energy to it and. Um, just a good sense of fun, and I like the characters. I had to say. So, despite this numerous things, I I am knocking this film down. I do quite like it, and like I will recommend it, providing you go into it with your eyes open. You're not expecting anything too kind of technically fantastic. So, I'm going to give this movie a six point five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>